Well, hello, everybody. Great to see all of you here. It's wonderful that you got out on this cold evening to come and learn about the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program and how to be certified in this program to be a teacher. If you're uh, standing up, you can be seated. And I'd just like to point out that we are in the character unit of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. Character unit is the uh, not the exact start. I mean, we have some some uh, some units that are available for younger students, but this is the intermediate intermediate series, and this is usually the one that we'll start out with with adults and in uh, schools and so forth. So today we're on page LP3 in the unit, and that's just before page 55. Just a couple pages before 55 to help you find it. It's LP3. Excuse me, LP3A. The title of this, uh, this portion is The Making of a VIP. The Making of a VIP. Now, you're going to learn what VIP means along the way also, so bear with us. Notice that it says a note to the teacher. And again, what we're doing here is we're becoming teachers. We're in hopes of being certified in the Peaceful Solution Program so that we can go out and teach uh, whoever is desiring it, whether it be schools, whether it be individuals, whether it be governments, so that we can take this message to the people. Now, this... Um, well, before I go any further there, let's go to uh, let's go to the preface, which is way up front there, page uh, XV. It's right after the index, but the preface, and and this is called influence from the teacher. Now, I can't really stress to you how important it is we as teachers understand what type of influence that that we are with students. Who's the student? <laughs> the student is everybody that sees you, everybody you're around, everybody that hears you. Not only, not only do we present this in, in an organized form to people, but we also present this in our everyday lives and how we conduct ourselves. Because that's when people really learn about you and learn from you by what you do. And so this influence from you, the teacher, is so very important. I want to go over this page briefly with you. This is the author talking about uh, his childhood and how important the influence from a teacher is. He says, thinking back on my early school years, I remember many of the things taught by my teachers that were not part of the regular curriculum. You know, over and above reading uh, uh, math and, uh, and spelling and so forth. It was those teachings that influenced my thinking. Many of them still guide my actions today. Think back a little bit, just briefly, think back about a teacher that you might have had in your younger years, maybe elementary school, maybe uh, middle school, junior high and so forth. Just think back and see if there was a teacher there that you can tell, that you can point out an influence that they had in your life. Now, we know that there's negative and positive influences, and we were influenced by both of those things in our growing up. But just like the author's talking about right here, it was, it was those teachings that weren't part of the regular curriculum that influenced his thinking, and he said many are still with him today. I remember very early in my childhood, even before my school years, things my parents taught me that actually guided my interaction with others. One statement I heard more than once from my father in the face of some frustrating event was, you know, son, two wrongs do not make a right. Very simple statement, right? Very simple. But it took hold. It had impact. It, it was said with with 
with heart. It was said, you know, with meaning and when, with, with empathy and care and concern because he wanted his son to really learn this thing. And this is one of the things that we have to do as teachers also is we have to learn how to get this across to people. Had my father were, father's words not been mentioned in my hearing, but other more damaging words such as get even, fight back, I'll never forgive you for that or I'll get you for that, I might have treated others differently. In my lifetime, I've seen many people retaliate, children, adults, and nations. However, I have never seen peace brought by someone doing wrong to another after that person did wrong to him. I've heard from various of you uh, from time to time about how when you were younger a parent might have said you know you better you better take care of that bully or I'm gonna take care of you if you get a beaten you if you don't beat him up you're gonna get a beaten when you get home that's a very negative thing to say and that's something that'll stick with people too especially from a teacher a parent somebody that's looked up to Teachers greatly influence our future leaders. We're going to talk about influence in just a moment. This means teachers have a major impact on the outcome of the world's future. And just a few words placed in a person's mind at the proper time can actually guide that person's thinking for the rest of his or her life. Now, a moment ago, I asked you to think back on possibly a teacher in school that, that really stood out in your mind whether it was negative or positive, hopefully positive, but what I'd like you to do is take just a moment, just research those memory banks for just a minute here, and think of back in your younger years. Now, you're hearing a lot of things that, that will influence you positively for the rest of your life these days because we're learning the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program, right? What I'd like you to do is look back and see if there was anyone in your life that along the way, possibly in an adverse time in your life, that said something, some simple words, very similar to what our author, his dad said when he said, son, two wrongs do not make a right. Was there something that was said to you that really stands out? I'll just share with you briefly, some of you have heard this before, but I had an uncle that, um, uh, we weren't that close by any means, but uh, along the way, during a, a, a particularly bad time in my life uh, as a teenager um, where many people did not really put a lot of trust in me uh, thinking that I, I would fail at many different things uh, but I had a pretty bad attitude really but this uncle I was helping him one day work on a car that nobody else could figure out what was wrong with and I started messing around with it in about 30 minutes the car was running and he was just amazed and he said you know David he said I've seen a few things from you before and what I want to tell you right now and don't forget this he, he said that I could do anything that I set my mind to do now that was something I had not heard before I mean ever and I was probably I don't know 16 or 17 years old but I had never heard those kind of words come from anybody to me. Really? Well, talk about something sticking with me all my life. That really did. So think back a little bit and see if something like that might have occurred with you. To, uh, because I'd like for you to understand the influence that comes from somebody that is a teacher to you. Whether it be you know, a relative, a teacher, uh, uh, a teacher in school, a parent. Whatever the case may be, you're being taught by people's actions and what you accept from them. A morally sound, wise, caring teacher can help one, ten, or ten thousand students on their way to becoming morally sound, wise, and caring adults. Well, in reading the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program to any student will mean a lot. Notice it said, reading the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program to any student will mean a lot. And these words, you know, they, they don't go out and come back void. These, these are powerful words. Now, you as the teacher influencing the student with the personal determination to leave the classroom with the wisdom and knowledge found in these books will mean everything in the student's life. So that's what I'd like to read to you again. Influencing the student with the personal determination 
that they leave the classroom with the wisdom and knowledge found in these books will mean everything in the student's life. And sometimes you might think that, well, you're teaching a class and these words are just flying over their head or, or you see some people talking and so forth and, and for all you know, they're sitting there thinking blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, it's amazing though what people do remember. And just like this personal story, you know, a very positive one of something in, in, our, in the author of The Peaceful Solution in his life where his dad said something that stuck with him, that can jog something in, in someone's mind, you know, to help them think back and think about a positive thing that might have been said to them. Or the positive words you're speaking might be the only ones that they've ever heard in their life uh, uh, of someone telling them that, that they can do something. So everyone needs direction, but the early teen years are those when children seek direction primarily from those outside the home. And so most children during the, these years feel that they know everything that their parents know. Now we've, we've seen that, right? Therefore, they'll listen more closely to those outside the home, thinking they will learn things that their parents don't know. And when I say we've seen that before, I've, I've seen it myself um, when I was younger, too. But this stage is set, therefore it's set because the teacher is exalted in their minds as one having the answers. Hence, we dedicate this, these books to the teachers and the world leaders tomorrow. So that's the preface. We've gone through it before when we first started this book. But I wanted to go back and, and, and review the importance of positive words, even just a few that are spoken. Now, see, that was an influence that lasted him all his life just like the one I mentioned has, has lasted me all my life. Yeah, I've had ups and downs and everything, but, you know, back in the back of my mind, that thing would pop up every now and then. You know, hey, you can, you can do what you set your mind to. So that word influence, let's turn over. We're jumping ahead just a little bit, but I think it's important that, that you know a little bit about this word. So page 60, let's, let's jump over there. Okay, on page 60, influencers are all around us, and of course our values play such a key role in developing our character that you've got to be aware of how influences affect the things that are important to you. And, and the reason I'm just doing a little brief um, definition of this is because th this chapter deals a lot with influences, and it starts out right from the very beginning. Um, an influence is something or someone that has the ability to affect your attitude, your way of thinking, and your feeling, and your behaving. So an influence can affect you in many different ways. If you look down into the next paragraph about midways, it says everything you hear, experience, and see will have every conversation, every interaction, everything that, that, that you're a part of or don't even know you're a part of. These things can influence what you value or motivate you to create new values. Now, just to uh, show you how subtle this is, turn to page 62. Page 62 tells us that influences are subtle, some of them. The foods you eat, look at that first paragraph, the foods we eat. Uh, down there under the picture, it says the colors that we see, they also influence us. So now we're talking about food and colors? And, and it's influencing the way we feel and the, the way we think and, and what we do, the way we behave? Really? Well, it doesn't stop there. Look at the next page. Well, some influences we're aware of, you know, like the pet influences, for instance. We know that pets are kind of fun to have around, you know, uh, playful and everything, and, and can put a smile on your face. If you turn the next page, page 64, uh, it says in the first paragraph there, violence on television. Well, television is the key word there. That television has influenced so much in these last, um, well, since about 1934 or so. You know, it has influenced things so much, the movies and television, whether it be positive influences or negative influences, and, and whether you saw or just heard some of the things taking on, taking place on that television. 
uh, on the next page, it talks about um, the subconscious mind a little bit, how negative influence become part of your subconscious mind. And even though you're not aware of them, they can cause you to think and act in a specific way. And it talks more about entertainment. Then if you flip the page over, page 67, it's talking about music and how music can influence your character. Really? Music? You mean I just heard this song and I'm, I'm like, yeah, that sounds really great. And the words that are being sung to that song, if you think back, uh, there's many of us old enough in here to, to remember watching TV and seeing commercials in our childhood that I bet that each one of us could probably sing a jingle to an advertisement right now. If I said one, if I just picked one out, I'm not going to, but if I picked one out and named that company, I bet, I bet all of us could sing that jingle, you know? And that's how strong it is. That's how strong these influences are. So let's go on back. Let's go on back to LP3A. And so we've talked about the influences and we've talked about how important the influences are that you put forth as a teacher. And remember, not only in your words, but also your actions too. Children, other adults, you know, they watch you. They, they see if you're doing what you say. So that, that's actually a very great part of this making of a VIP. So the concept of what makes people, we're back on LP3A and we're on the first paragraph. The concept, of course, this is like a general idea, a, a plan or, or something, or, or a general theme of what's taking place. So the concept of what makes people important varies from one individual to the next. I know when I was younger, I thought someone was important was like, you know, of course, the president or somebody, you know, someone in a, in a high government office, uh, possibly even the the uh, president of the neighborhood association or something was very important or the mayor or somebody you know well also i thought well these uh movie stars or tv stars they're very important too they must be important we see them all the time everybody knows them everybody gathers around them all the time they must be important right well so the concept of what makes people important varies from one person to the next. Now, some say power, fame, wealth, or a combination of all these three is what makes a person important. And, you know, I, I got to say I, I probably agreed with that before I found out about the peaceful solution and found out what, what true Im importance was and, and what true success is and still learning to this day. But some say that the power, fame, and the wealth is what makes a person important. Well, when you think about this, we've seen some major things take place in the, in the last several weeks. Uh, I mean, amazing things take place that we've never seen before, probably, here where we live in, in the United States. And we've seen people with power that that power was taken away like that. We've seen people with fame, that their fame was smashed to where people once thought, oh, you know, I look up to this person and look at this, and all of a sudden with just a few words from, again, remember the TV, remember the movies, remember entertainment. Well, a few words from on that TV of people saying something negative about that person and backing it up with something to try to convince you we've seen them take that power and that fame and we've seen them just you know rub a person's face in the dirt wealth okay wealth well right now you can look in the news and you'll see people all over that are very wealthy i mean billionaires and you can see that their wealth is starting to be taken down once again by that influence from the social uh, media and from the and from the media the television the news and so forth we can see these things taking place now you know are they right 
Are they wrong in what they're saying? Well, I don't know. But I can tell you that if you're betting on power, fame, or wealth to be your uh, what you uh, rely on, and if you think you're really an important individual once you have that, I don't think so. You know, you can go look up look up right now uh, lottery winners, and uh, we've been that's been mentioned to us before how lottery winners they win this huge amount of money, and they have no budgeting skills. All, all they know is they got all this money, and now they're going to go and spend it. They start buying Ferraris and big houses and buying stuff for their friends and relatives and just blowing it, partying all the time and everything. Next thing you know, a couple years later, most of them are in the hole. Most of them are in worse shape than they were when they started out. So if you think this is the way to what makes a very important person, we need to think again. So it's the belief of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program that the true measure of importance of any individual begins and ends with moral character moral character let's turn over to uh, page I think it's page four turn over to page four please in your books and at the very top it says our character defines what is important to us what we believe in and how we treat others just as clearly as our faces and voices define who we are physically that's that's a real strong statement because <clears throat> somebody that you know very well and um, you might not even see them but when you hear their voice you can tell it's that person without a doubt there's very few there, there might be a uh, you know along the way there might be someone that sounds exactly like a friend of yours you know but that's that's pretty rare but think about it you know you can recognize a voice a long ways off Anyway, um, these define who we are physically. In fact, our character is an integral part of who we are, a very important, necessary part of who we are, this character. Uh, over on page 8, morals. So we're talking about moral character. And on page 8, morals, what do they have to do with my character? Well, regardless of culture, religion, or environment, there are some values that all people share. <coughs> Excuse me. These are called moral values. A moral value is like a line that divides wrong behavior from right behavior. And you know, even though some people are, are, are have a, a divided attitude about what what some things are considered moral and and not moral, um, and and what is right and what is wrong, uh, we see a lot of things today um, from. Uh, certain groups rights you know that uh, you know sometimes are being pushed really hard on people uh, then we see another side that says no we're not going to do that and you know they both say that they're right they both say that what they're doing is moral and right and it's the right thing to do to show care and concern well both of them can't be right I didn't want to get in too much detail on that but uh, these are called moral values here's an example okay um, you know, I don't like the thought of me going home tonight and finding that um, my house has been broken into and it's been ransacked and there's clothing all over the floor, um, you know, uh, uh, a few things that I really care about, uh, uh, you know, items that, that, that mean a lot to me that might not mean anything to anybody else. May might be an old shirt or an old coat or, or a picture of a family member or something like that, you know. Um, it, it might be a Peaceful Solution book, you know. It, that These things mean a lot to me, but they might not mean a lot to the person that broke in my house, but they're scattered all over, torn up, you know, paint thrown on them or whatever else you know and just the thought of having someone going through my stuff you know I don't like that idea and you know what I bet I could go find the most hardened criminal and I could ask him about that and he would feel the same way if he went back to his if I'm and, and I have talked to very hardened criminals about these things in, in sharing the peaceful solution in prisons and so forth and I can tell you that that's a big deal some of you may, might even know if you're in jail 
and somebody goes into your cell while you're out and goes through your stuff, is that a big deal? You bet it is. So even though you might disagree on, well, you know, you think it's okay to murder somebody if you're mad at them, or you think it's okay to, to you know, whatever, <laughs> Uh, you can both agree that you don't like being stolen from or you wouldn't like being having a family member of yours murdered or something like that, right? So you can agree on some of these things. Whether you choose to, you know, practice it and, and practice the right way is another thing. So morals, though, the morals we're talking about, this moral character, there's rules, these moral rules. They're rules to go by. And these, these moral values that you build are like that line right there on page 8. It shows you know, a line between right and wrong. It's the, it's, that, it's, it's the guiding force there. And just under that it says morality can be divided into three basic categories. Behavior and attitude towards all life. That's all life. You know, you think you, you wouldn't kill anybody, but it's okay to be driving down the road and a possum runs out and you're like, oh, 10 points, boom, you know. No, all life. Behavior and attitude towards possessions and property, uh, that's a big thing, you know. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that we start out with with the children are, you know, it, it's not right just because you see, you know, a belonging of another child, whether it be a pen or a light or a flashlight, uh, a book, anything like that, and you go over and start messing with it without permission, guess what? That's a big deal. Behavior and attitude towards the environment. You know, we have to care for everything around us. If we don't, it's not going to be there. We have to, we have to care for the land. We have to care for the crops that are grown. You know, if we expect this earth to produce for us, we have to produce for it also. Okay, so these morals are so very important. And in this chapter, well, you know... <laughs> I don't think I can stop without at least looking at page. Uh, uh, actually, we don't we don't have time. Uh, just reminding you what uh, what the author's father said. You know, two rights don't uh, uh, two wrongs don't make a right. You know, that's so very important to remember because that 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 is a great moral lesson to learn. But in this chapter, we're back on LP3A. In this chapter, a twofold interpretation of the acronym. Uh, I always like to tell people, you know, an acronym is a word that's formed from the first letter of each one of the words in a certain phrase. That's an acronym. And there's many of them in the Peaceful Solution. But this acronym VIP will be presented. And students will learn that when they access their when they assess their values as well as imitate and practice, get that values as well as imitate, you know, V-I, and practice, the P, V-I-P, values, imitate, practice. Don't forget the practice part. When you practice this proper behavior, you can become a very important person. or are very important people here. Um, okay. It's vital that we teach our children how to monitor, you know, that's watching and keeping check on and so forth, but to monitor their own environment. There's not going to be somebody standing there all the time telling you what to do, um, reminding you not to trespass, reminding you not to uh, step on a bug, reminding you not to, you know, there's not going to be someone standing there all the time. Now, you can have that voice, the same one that the author had of his dad. You can have that voice in the back of your mind there, and you can have it built in within you and have it part of your value system built up so that you don't have to have somebody standing there. You can be right there and make that decision on your own to do the right thing. So it's vital that we teach our children how to monitor, how to watch these things. As they mature and gain independence, they must learn how to filter out these influences, you know, these, these uh, negative ones that pose barriers to attaining a positive moral character, which we spoke about a moment ago. Get this into your hearts and minds. Really look at this 
and 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 know what it's talking about. But um, these things that pose barriers to attaining this positive moral character, such as violence on television, uh, in movies, songs, as well as, and we didn't go there, but peer pressure, negative peer pressure. Peer pressure, man, that's a huge thing. If you want to see what peer pressure does, I mean, how many have seen the, the news lately? Have you seen the Capitol riots and these things taking place? You see what peer pressure does? That's peer pressure right there taking place. And people did some crazy things. We're hearing now from people like, well, you know, I didn't really mean to do that. I, I was just there. And, and then, you know, uh, people were going inside, so I went inside. <laughs> you know, and they were going in this office, so I went in that office too. I thought it'd be cool to put my feet up on the desk or whatever the case may be. But see, that's what peer pressure does. It takes you to a place that you don't need to go. You have to really be on guard about that peer pressure. I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a big, big deal. And it starts out with a few words. A few words from somebody. A few words from someone like, Oh man, that food was nasty. I would never eat that again. All of a sudden, you just put something in somebody's mind. What if it was a child? I've seen that. Where one child says, oh, that's nasty. I don't like that. And then, then the whole room, oh, that's nasty. I wouldn't eat that. You know? and, and before, all the rest of the children were eating it. Peer pressure. Remember that. All right, so we live in a culture where our children's role, model, role models are sports players, singers, and movie stars. Now, I know that's common uh, with people who are not trained in the peaceful solution and have been taught this all their life. That's true. Sports players, singers, movie stars, the ones that make the big money, the powerful, the, the fame, the, the wealth. Remember up at the top of the page, power, fame, and wealth, these people that we think are so important, you know, but they can't even run their own lives. They can't even go outside a building without getting mobbed. They have no privacy, you know. I bet some of them started out wanting that fame but thought they could just shut it off and turn it on whenever they wanted to. So, you know, uh, it's, it's great to have a little privacy sometimes. It's great to sit back and just think about things and go, you know, sit by the, the pond or something like that. And these people can't do that. Their, their, their lives are ruined. <clears throat> well, this wouldn't be an issue if these role models lived exemplary lives. And uh, exemplary, you know, that's just uh, uh, something to be worthy of. It's a, a pattern that we might want to look at and imitate and, you know, a commendable pattern, okay, a commendable way of life. But where positive character is lacking, it poses a threat to the moral development of our children. So we must also teach our children how to choose positive role models. In fact, we have a... Um, uh, quite a section talking about how to choose friends available in the peaceful solution which we'll get to you know as we as we go along and there will be reminders in other units also when dealing with you know how to pick friends how to uh, how to how to start out by you know even if you're going to hang around with these people and it goes much deeper than that we don't have time tonight to cover everything but <clears throat> Uh, also, we must teach our children how to choose these positive role models and what behaviors are worth imitating. So let's work together to ensure that our children appreciate that the true measure, the true measure, you know, you take a tape measure out and you measure something and now you know that's how it is. If it says uh, 18 inches, it's 18 inches. You got the tape measure right there, right? So this true measure of self-worth, we're measuring it just like with a tape measure. And importance is attained through, guess what? Positive character. Positive character is the thing that does that. Positive character is the thing that nobody can take away from you. You know, those that have power, fame, and wealth, we've seen them get their face ground in the dirt just in, the, just in days. They go from being up here and in, 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 in people, you know, thinking so much of them and they're so important and famous and wonderful and role models, you know, to 
you know, they're, they're, they're nothing. No one wants to be around them, and they're, they're distancing themselves from these people, you know, whoever they, they might be. Uh, we've seen this take place. So that there, what they thought was important was taken away. What you and I should be knowing is important, this positive character can never, ever, ever be taken away. You have to choose to get rid of it. No one can make you make you get rid of it. <clears throat> let's um, let's go ahead and turn over uh, turn over to page LP three C. So we're getting into uh, we're getting into the lesson uh, the lesson plan of this chapter. Hopefully, we we now have an understanding of why we as teachers need to be willing and, and, and able to be the positive influence in the student's life and how important that really is. So this lesson plan of making a VIP, here's our purpose and objective. Students will learn how to develop their own systems of values amidst negative influences in order to obtain a positive character. So, you know, some of these negative influences, the peer pressure, the peer pressure is a huge thing, a huge barrier uh, uh, to, to obtaining and, uh, and building positive character, uh, as well as the television and all these other things we already talked about. So the materials that are needed, of course, is the student handbook and hopefully something to write with. And so the first procedure, now, as the teacher, you'll want, to, you'll want to make sure that you go through the lesson plan prior to teaching a class. If not, you'll be scattered and you know, jumping from here and there. And when I say jumping from here and there, I'm not talking about an organized manner in which you have something planned out to show something of importance that you, that you think needs to be shown to help get the message across. And many times, as you've seen with, uh, with other teachers uh, too, um, not only in the Peaceful Solution do we have articles and stories that help to form that in our minds, but also sometimes we have uh, articles that are you know, from, take, from, the, from the local news taking place that, that we're able to share and show to, uh, that certain point also. Uh, but you gotta be careful with that for sure. So, Procedure number one is to review the previous chapter, and that's the effects of character within the family. All right, and it says by asking students the following questions. <clears throat> so you'd want to have some questions lined out, and, and this is a guide on, on what question to ask. In this case, you could ask it exactly as it says. Um, you know, if you're dealing with uh, some, some younger children you might rephrase it just a little bit but but for the most part this is just fine how are character and personality developed in a family where there is abuse abuse how are character and personality developed in a family where there is abuse of course one of the answers that that you could be aware of uh, from your studies is that um, it would be in a negative way if there's a family where there is abuse, uh, it's going to be negative. In fact, I think, uh, let me find the page, page thir 38, I think. Yep, page 38, if you'll turn to page 38, if you have your books, just briefly. When there are problems at home, you know, uh, <clears throat> down there in about the second sentence, I think it says, no two sets of parents will raise their children in exactly the same way. Parenting styles differ from one home to the next and are a combination of many different factors. And here's the thing that we really need to remember too, is that an adult's experiences, you know, we're adults now and we have experiences behind us. Our experiences, values, and character define what type of parent we will be. What we have in us will define what kind of parent we will be. Now, we can, uh, 
Well, let me continue on. Although most parents treat their children with love and respect and provide them with safety, food, and shelter, there are some, because of their upbringing and choices, who are verbally, emotionally, physically, and even sexually abusive to their children. In these kind of homes, uh, they don't provide their children with sufficient food or clothing. And homes where these types of abuses and negligence occur are called dysfunctional homes. And it results in, the physical abuse results in internal or external bruises, fractures, brain damage, permanent injury or death. And these are some of the more noticeable things is the, is the physical abuse. But of course, there's emotional and verbal abuse also. And if you have your book on page 38, the little uh, uh, illustration right there shows a, a mom uh, pretty upset at the young, young man for breaking a vase or whatever that is and saying, you're so stupid, you can't do anything right. Has anybody ever heard something like that come out of the mouth of a teacher? I have. You know? Now, that stays with you for a large portion of your life too and all your life unless you learn about the peaceful solution and learn how to get that out of your life and to replace it with positive things so that's very very important to know all right so procedure b what are some elements of a healthy family now remember in the last chapter we went through the, the unhealthy family, the healthy family, and how to build character. So what are some elements of a healthy family? Well, you know, family members are given love, respect, and the support needed. Um, and, <laughs> excuse me, also appropriate affection is shown. You know, appropriate affection. Um, most people grow up without knowing what appropriate affection is. And... Um, uh, there's things that take place and even what's considered to be a normal, healthy, functional family that, uh, that are subtle and that a person doesn't even realize what they're doing and the things that they're putting into the mind of a child when, um, when doing certain things, uh, you know, getting dressed and so forth. Uh, uh, these things take place. But so in a healthy family, though, um, you have the appropriate affection and you have that love, respect, and support, the care and concern, which, which takes a lot of effort from the teacher, from the parent. It, you know, you can't just throw a child in front of a TV set and say, get out of my hair, go get some ice cream and, and go watch TV, get out of here. You know, you can't do that. Even if you've had a rough day, you can't do that. <laughs> Being a parent is a full-time job. <laughs> A full-time job. Being a functional family, healthy family is a full-time job. Okay. Um, number C, letter C. How can family members improve the overall character of their family? Well, uh, of course, being an example by practicing true morals, you know, uh, setting time together to study and so forth. Let's turn to uh, page 44. Um, let's see. So, if you look at the top of page 45, it's talking about healthy families. And it says, in these families, there is consistency in daily routines. Um, in other words, there's a time for everything. You know, the children know what to expect from day to day. They have a routine. They, they get to know what they're supposed to do, and you don't have to tell them all the time, hopefully. You can feel safe in knowing that your parents will always make time to go grocery shopping, and you'll always have food to eat. In a home where there's a set routine, there's a time for homework, there's baths, bedtime, and even fun time, as they say. Everyone is assigned chores and contributes to how the family functions. So everybody can feel like they're part of something, part of something valuable, that they have input in what's taking place in that family. They're, they're not just disregarded and thrown off to the side and, and, and no one cares about their opinion. Spending time together, just a little further down there on page 45, about halfway, spending time together is important because it helps you to appreciate your similarities and differences. 
<clears throat> and these families find special things to, to do together that are pleasant and morally enlightening to one another. Of course, keeping the rules, morally enlightening, learning about the rules, showing how the rules should be kept, show, building values within. The members respect each other and their possessions by always remembering to ask permission before touching, taking, or borrowing an item. They often take turns reading from a special book. Um, you know, the Peaceful Solution is a great one to read from, too. And they value the quality time you spend with your family and be thankful for each and every family member. Being thankful for each and every family member, even the ones that you sometimes have a disagreement with, you know. Um, even uh, 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 overcoming twinges of, um, of jealousy or, or thinking something's unfair. You know, a healthy family can talk about these things and, and the proper lessons can be given to show how to, how to conduct yourselves and how to overcome those thoughts and feelings that are sure to come you know they're they're going to come it's it's part of learning and so being taught how to handle these things is the key and that's where we as teachers come in that's where we as teachers come in with our students whether they be our children whether they be students in a classroom or whether they be somebody in the workplace working together you know we're, we're all constantly teaching whether you know it or not. Okay, uh, look on down to procedure number two. Procedure number two is, uh, you know, tell students that they've explored how problems within a family can affect the development of a positive character. And in this chapter, you'll explore other factors that can affect character. You'll also learn to assess their, va your, their values and develop a positive character in the midst of negative influences. And it says have students turn to page 55 in the handbook and read this section. So we've talked a little bit about values. There's going to be a lot more about values coming up. We've talked a little bit about the negative influences, and this whole chapter really focuses a lot on influences, you know, positive and negative. Um, the... Um, You know, positive character, the development of positive character, I guess just to remind you of a few things, if we can turn to page 14, turn to page 14, so how problems within a family can affect the development of a positive character. So you want to tell students how, how this can be done we want to uh, we want to also uh, well keep this in mind as a teacher occasionally there's there's notes you know in the lesson plan that tell us you know tell students this explain to students this tell this and it might be scattered uh, we're at the very front of the chapter right here but it might be scattered you know midways through the book and I remember uh, it might have been Chris uh, one of the teachers beforehand was talking about having a card with a few notes on it to remind you what to tell the student or if it was something short you could jot a quick note down in the book right there on the page where you are to make sure that they know this certain thing okay everybody clear on that tell students if it says tell students you want to tell them somewhere along the way you want to tell them you know it might be in your own words as long as it encompasses everything that's being told uh, but on page 14 you'll find the positive 14 and 15 positive character traits and um, at the in the first paragraph it says your character is made up of many different qualities and they're called character traits character traits can be positive or negative based upon your values of what you've been taught your choices your experiences and the key to having this moral character is to develop positive character traits these traits that you exhibit when you demonstrate these traits on a consistent basis, remember consistent, that means, you know, all the time, all the time, you will be known as a person of integrity. Okay, so these are the things 
these are the things that we've got to remember. We, we've got to remember what positive character is, and we have to remember how the problems with the family can affect the positive building of positive character, or they can affect you negatively. So let's go on to, uh, it says turn to page 55 and read this. Um, okay, so we're going we're gonna to stop right there and go on over to page 55. And we'll get started here on page 55 in your handbook. It's chapter 3, The Making of a VIP. That's where we're at. And if you look at the balloon up at the top, it says, Educate, educate, educate on true moral character and save the world. Educate, educate, educate. You know, you hear that a lot in the Peaceful Solution, and it's because the Peaceful Solution doesn't force anything. The peaceful solution doesn't force you to learn positive moral character. You can't force somebody to do that. They could play a game and pretend that they know what they're doing or, or they when they see you they can, you know, uh, be very respectful for a moment, you know, until you turn your back or whatever, but it's not something you can force. This is where, you know, these things in uh, uh, I, I don't know, military, prison, uh, many other places where um, certain uh, titles are given and, you know, you better do a certain thing and say a certain thing whenever you see the uh, lieutenant that's coming around for a sale check or something. You better make sure you talk to him in, in a certain manner of, of how they want to be talked to. You should talk to everybody with respect. There's, there's not a problem with that. But what I'm saying is by forcing someone to do that, all they're going to do is do it while he's there, and the minute the person's gone, then it's on. You know, It's not real. It's not true. It's not, it's, not, uh, uh, it's not coming. Their heart and mind has not been changed, in other words. you know, They're just doing it as a farce. So not everyone has the benefits of loving and caring parents, nor does everyone even have parents. There are many orphans throughout the world. In fact, um, on the nightly news, uh, I saw one time where there was 153 million orphans worldwide. And that's, that's just a conservative estimate from what they can count and a little bit added in there. And 397,000 and some change in the United States alone. 397,000 orphans in the United States. And I'm sure the number is much bigger than that, that we're not even aware of. But there's many orphans throughout the world. Due to sickness, disease, wars, and other acts of violence, many have lost parents and family members. If you're one of those, do not let that stop you if you desire to follow the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program and develop a perfectly moral character. I mean, can you imagine? Can, can you imagine, and possibly some of you in here, have lost uh, family members, a parent, um, to war? Um, or, or, or possibly they've come back, um, you know, with missing limbs and so forth you know and these things these things shouldn't take place it shouldn't occur and, and the ripple effect that it has being you know a child losing losing a parent to something like this it's just uh, it, you know talk about being affected for life that's something hard to overcome but many of us in this room I know have so by learning the peaceful solution and learning how to how to think positively and and how to take everything that has occurred into our life and turn it into a positive to bring us to where we are today so you will stand out um, developing that perfectly moral character you will then stand out among men and women where others fail and so we really want to want to encourage you if you are one sitting here on the TV, wherever you might be, if you are somebody that has lost a family member due to some of these things, sickness, disease, in fact, even now with the, uh, with the COVID-19 and everything taking place, um, there are a lot of people that are dying due to 
diseases that they've got within them. Um, it seems that uh, this particular thing really uh, attacks and, and then whatever sickness a person has pops out and that's what takes them down. These sicknesses and, and the wars, there's so many wars that are taking place right now all over the world. Uh, I mean, it, it's horrible and, and just building more orphans. Anyway, you will then stand out among men and women and succeed where others fail. And you've already begun to explore the important role that true moral values play in your life. And you could, you could look back on page 6 and 7 and, and look at uh, some values and how important they are. And, and that value system, once it's formed, you're not likely to turn against it. Just like as a, as a young child, I know somebody who it was just instilled within them that human life was so very important that that person never, ever thought about killing somebody even to the point where they thought they were going to be drafted into the armed services they would have to say well no I'm sorry <laughs> you know that's not going to occur because it was instilled within them so heavy those values can be that strong so these true moral values you get them instilled within you and you won't go back but they are the basis by which your character is formed in addition to the values that have been instilled within you by your parents, grandparents, babysitters, teachers. You have also developed some of your own values that you believe to be important along the way. This is called growing up. Maturing, forming your own opinions and your values are how you become a unique individual. While learning the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program and making sure those values are moral that there that there's something that will help you grow and will make you succeed that will help you su succeed in life and as you well know no two people are alike and without the process of growing up and developing some values independent of what you have already been taught you would be identical to your parents just as your parents would be identical to their parents measure yourself by the things you value we live in a world of constant interaction these interactions influence the way we think, feel, and act. Remember the influences. It's coming up. You can, you can study ahead a little bit to be prepared for it. It's up to you to be aware of how these influences will affect what you value and your choice to obtain positive character. So I highly encourage you to look back over uh, what we've studied so, so far in this particular book in the character unit and be prepared for the next class and you can even look ahead and uh, and see what's coming so you can really have it fresh in your mind and uh, I'll be right back if you'll all please stand <clears throat>